While it wasn't the first mainstream automaker in the world to bring an electric car to market that customers could buy, that distinction actually went to Mitsubishi and its IMEV EV, Nissan was the first mainstream automaker to build a fully electric car that was sold in reasonably high volumes around the world. Indeed, for a while between late 2010 and 2014, if you wanted an affordable electric car, the Nissan LEAF was pretty much your only choice in some markets. And while the Nissan LEAF has remained the world's best-selling electric vehicle by volume for the majority of the last nine years, I suspect that it's about, if it hasn't already been surpassed in total sales in volume, by the Tesla Model 3. The LEAF, now in its second major iteration and ninth year of production, isn't as popular among buyers as it once was. Issues with battery degradation caused by a lack of active thermal management in the Leaf's battery pack. And then there's RapidGate, where successive rapid charging sessions had their charge power proactively turned all the way down to protect the car's battery pack, which resulted in super long charging times. And then, of course, a prohibitively expensive battery replacement program for those whose battery packs had reached end of life. Each of these have helped cloud the reputation of the LEAF and Nissan among electric car fans. That and, of course, increased competition from Tesla, Chevrolet, Kia, Hyundai and many others. Outside of the bubble of the electric car world, however, the LEAF has a different challenge, keeping itself current in a world where the shift towards crossovers and SUVs is continuing apace. In Europe, where hatchbacks are still reasonably popular, the LEAF continues to sell reasonably well, although competition from those other automakers I've mentioned is stealing a significant amount of its custom. But in other markets, buyers are wanting something other than a hatchback. They want an SUV, which is why Nissan, one of the few automakers that even plans to continue to offer hatchbacks and sedans into the future, is working on building an all-electric SUV that it says it will bring to market. We first saw it back at the 2017 Tokyo Motor Show in the form of the Nissan IMX concept. Now it's back in the form of the Nissan Aria concept. Revealed at this week's Tokyo Motor Show, and sharing space alongside the Nissan IMK Urban EV commuter concept on the automaker's stand at the same, the Nissan Aria follows in the tyre tracks of some of Nissan's previous concept cars. But while technical specs are limited right now, it's a concept after all, I think it's important to note that this is the first time in a real long while that Nissan hasn't released a car, a concept car, with the IM moniker. This suggests that the car is closer to production than the previous electric SUV concepts we've seen. Yes, concept is still present in the name of this new vehicle, but if you look inside, you'll see that this is far less extreme than previous concepts we've seen from Nissan. And Nissan is dropping big hints. This is what we're going to see enter into production as its long promised electric SUV within the next year or so. In this case then, the word concept is used to denote that maybe Nissan hasn't completely nailed down final specifications, or it doesn't yet want to publicly announce them. As it is still technically a concept car, Nissan isn't talking specifics about the drivetrain. No surprise there. But according to the press release that accompanies the car, the Aria does have dual motors for all-wheel drive capabilities. And since Nissan also unveiled a prototype LEAF hatchback this week with all-wheel drive capabilities, a car that it says it's not going to bring to market, it is more than plausible to suggest that the all-wheel drive Nissan LEAF prototype, which has a claimed 304 horsepower and 501 pound-feet of torque, is actually a test mule for the Aria's drivetrain. Of that all-wheel drive LEAF, Nissan says regenerative braking all round helps to reduce pitch and drive when compared to a front-wheel drive LEAF, which of course means a smoother overall passenger experience, while independent torque control on each wheel also apparently helps tighten things up when it comes to handling. But we're not here to talk about this all-wheel drive LEAF prototype. Let's get back to the Aria. Nissan has revealed dimensions for its all-electric SUV, and in its current form, it's comparable in length to the Nissan Rogue, albeit a little taller and wider. Inside, however, I'm wagering internal space is closer to that of the Murano, as the Aria has a completely flat cabin floor. 
Underneath, of course, is a large capacity unknown battery pack and power electronics, which Nissan says will be compatible with vehicle to home systems from production launch. Sitting on 21 inch rims, the Aria's design is certainly quite aggressive, but while it does have all wheel drive capabilities and looks like those approach angles aren't too bad for off-roading, I honestly don't think it will be a decent off-roader. Instead, I suspect those looks are mainly for show. And in a market where more and more people want an SUV for show, this car will certainly fit right in. As to inside, well, I think that's the thing we can expect to change the most. Right now, the Aria features the fairly slim seats of your standard concept car, uncomfortable seats that will inevitably need to change to more comfortable ones for a production vehicle. The dash is minimalist with a screen directly in front of the driver and then a center mounted screen that's accessible to both front passenger and driver. Nissan says it's done away with physical switches and gone with haptic touch sensitive controls for the main vehicle functions. But honestly, again, this is a kind of concept car trope and I can see this becoming a physical switch layout for a production version. Software will be updatable over the air, although Nissan calls it firmware over the air or FOTA for short. And the car's onboard route planner mimics Tesla's in terms of awareness of charging stations, current energy use, weather conditions, and traffic. As you might expect too, there's a lot of smartphone connectivity promised with the Aria, including a smartphone app that integrates video chat and ride sharing. It also apparently operates as a key to the vehicle, syncing driver preferences and unlocking the door before you've got in, just by approaching the car. I'm not sure how that's going to work for couples traveling together, but I guess we'll find out if this ever makes it to production. The only other thing we, we know for sure, well, Nissan wants the Aria to use ProPilot 2.0, which is the next big iteration of Nissan's semi-autonomous driver assistance features. It's already been debuted on Nissan's latest generation Skyline in Japan and is capable of complete hands-off driving in a single lane and uses visual sensors to ensure the driver is still paying attention to the road ahead rather than steering wheel sensors. Given how quickly Nissan had promised to evolve ProPilot, this is a good hint that Nissan's commitment to specifying ProPilot 2.0 suggests the Aria will be entering into production within the next 12 months. But that is purely based on my gut instincts, nothing else. As to the really big question, will the battery be liquid cooled? Well, as you might expect, that's something we don't know. And frankly, unless Nissan changes its stance on that one, I think it's going to put a lot of people off buying what otherwise looks to be a good all electric addition to the Nissan family. So go on, Nissan, put liquid cooling in. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon. Feed our coffee habit or help us pay for the cruise trip to the LA Auto Show with Kofi or visit our swag store. I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. But until then, keep evolving.